Championai, championai, ole, ole, ole. FIFA Club World Cup champions. This is just another feeling altogether. This is our second trophy this season already. We have an opportunity for a third trophy on February the 27th when we play Liverpool in the Carabao Cup final. And what we missed out in 2012, 10 years later, we atone for them for what we missed out back then. It's um, We finally completed the whole set. We have a Premier League, we have a League Cup, we have a FA Cup, we have a Champions League, we have a Europa League, we have a Cup Winners Cup, we have the we have the UEFA Super Cup, and now we have finally the FIFA Club World Cup. Everything that is to be achieved at club level, at all um, at all top flight um, trophies, week whatever you can win, we have won every single one of them. It's an absolute different high altogether. We came up against a good Palmeiras side. Who are a Copa Libertadores champions, and uh, I'll come to that detailed review in a minute. But before I go into this any review further, I will take, request all of you to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification to get notifications whenever I upload videos like this or go live. I will be doing a post uh, IPL auction thing for the Chennai Super Kings probably sometime around tomorrow once everything is settled down. And uh, I was due to speak about Chennai FC's coach Bozid Bandovich. Um, him parting ways after we got hammered 5 0 by FC Goa. I'll do that about later as well. But Chelsea Football Club are FIFA Club World Cup champions 2022. We are the champions of the world. I mean, you can spin it however you like, but you, you have to beat what's in front of you. You cannot take anything for granted. We played against Al Hilal, the AFC Champions League winners. We played against um, Palmeiras, the Copa Libertadores winners and their respective South American um, Champions League champions. And we had to overcome them and it was a very, very difficult process. Kind of what Liverpool did back in 2019 when they were in the final. They took extra time to beat Flamengo um, in the final with the help of Bobby Firmino's winner. And this one also, we had to undergo the same process. But a win is a win. Um, no matter how, however it comes, that's what all it matters in tournament football. You can play absolute shit, but you can come out winners, and that is all what counts at the end of the end of the day. Whether you are good enough to lift the trophy or not, and certainly we hung, we stuck, we stuck by the game. We ground, we. It's these types of games where you have to grind out results. You're, you're not going to get things easy. You have to stay in the game as long as you can, and then hit them. Um, when the opportunity comes, you have to grind out certain results like you do with certain Premier League away ga away games where you find the team where you find the team hard to break down and you have to just stay stand by the game. You cannot just say, oh my God, I, I'm going to drop off. You have to be in full concentration for 90 minutes and 120 minutes if possible and somehow find a way to break down the team. If you do that, you are worthy champions, you are worthy winners, else you're not and you have to go and continue further. So this is what the lineup which we went. Edward Mendy started in goal. Um, obviously, him coming back from the African Cup of Nations, being champion with Senegal for the first ever time in their history. Um, Mendy, I was always in the in the perception that if your best players are fit, they start. There is no room for sentiments. Yes, Kepa has been superb, but when Mendy is there, he is the number one, and he starts over Kepa any day. Our back three. Christensen, Thiago Silva, Antonio Rudiger. Our, uh, our wingbacks were Aspilicueta and Hudson Odoi. It was not Alonso. I kind of got that because of the pace that Palmeiras got. They were ex they were super pacey and Alonso could have not uh, coped up with that. So Hudson Odoi played there as a left wing back. And the front three were Mason Mount, um, Kai Havertz, and Romelu Lukaku, who, who scored a winner in the semi final. So that was the lineup which we went with. As you can all see here. And the first time, uh, I mean, the whole game was kind of very, very scratchy. The both teams were were trying to play, were trying to play a um, uh, forward passing, uh, trying to create chances. Um, Chelsea, we always, do, we do what we do in most games. We keep possession. We keep it simple. We know what we're doing. We know what we are passing. But somehow when it comes to the final third, we have no fucking clue what we are doing. And, and it's mainly down to some of the final balls today. Um, yes, he did provide the assist for the goal. But apart from that, some of his crossing was absolutely abysmal. Callum Hudson-Odoi. Yes, he put, he put a cross. It was perfect on a plate for Lukaku, who scored. 
yes he did that but apart from that he is some of his crossing some of his um, he tried to cut inside he tried to shoot i mean the he's he's so inconsistent that's the problem with him one game he can put a 10 out of 10 but then the next game he can drop down to a 4 or a 3 that's not what you want you have you need to be like at the, at this point at the highest level in the premier league you need to have three or four good games in a row to succeed at the top level else it's very hard to sustain given the fact that there are so many players um, everywhere who are looking to break into the premier league first team and stay there for a very long time um hudson odoy i felt was very average today but for um, but he did provide the telling cross for romelu lukaku who headed this one this was the opportunity i was speaking about you look at them hudson odoy got in the space after some good work by matteo kovacic um i was and i was thinking please do something please put in a good cross at least for once and then he did that and lukaku rose up and that was a proper striker's header finish that is what we want from our 100 million striker he has there has been so many talks about him should we sell him should we not but now in these two crucial goals two crucial winning games he has scored goals and he has um um kind of said i'm not going anywhere this is this is this is my club i want to stay i want to do more for this club and hopefully he continues like that and we go on to do more things this season but apart from that it was very scratchy both keepers hardly had anything to do both defenses both defenses were kind of pretty good our defense was as solid as ever what do you say about this man they they are never aging thiago silva just 37 years old that is probably just 12 years older than me um just 37 years old oh thiago silva oh thiago silva man is just unbelievable probably the best free transfer we have ever had um you could debate whether it's about it's in the best best free transfer in history but at least for chelsea's perspective for, for the past few seasons he's probably our best free transfer at this age of 37 he missed out on the champions league final because he had to he had to come off injured unfortunately but today and in this tournament and in fact this whole season he's been absolutely superb whenever he has been there um everything he did today was absolutely perfect apart from this moment where he um he did this handball which led to the penalty i mean you're kind of jumping for the header and you're trying to and when you just jump like that and when you jump with both of your hands doing like this that momentum kind of gives you a different perspective when you do like this you do um you do tend to jump higher and sometimes players do that just to get more um, Uh, to to get a higher chance of heading the ball away when the ball is when the ball is coming to you from the attacking from the attacking side he did that but for, but what happened was he yeah, i think he lifted it too much to the extent you look at this video it kind of went about the player's head and hit him here it is handball unfortunately um yes and uh, you think edward mendy after saving the penal one of the penalties in the afcon final he would save a penalty save this penalty but no he dived the wrong way you can't kind of criticize him for that and it was 1-1 and the palmeiras fans oh my god i have to give it to them man south american support is just on another level if you think the europe some of the european clubs have these ultras and these other fan bases that can do absolute madness south america this those compare nothing to palmeiras the south american support they are absolutely crazy and boy the fans they were fan, the fans were just on another level it was it was literally like their home game where their fans dominated yes they were many amount of chelsea supporters but the way palmeiras fans were shouting and screaming for 90 minutes constantly that was just unbelievable um commiserations to them but they extremely played well and hopefully they can go on and win more more and more trophies in the future but then the game was going like that it was 1-1 it was going to extra time and um, it needed a penal another penalty for us to so get get us in front for 2-1 there were two chances missed by christian pulisic two big two big chances i think uh, both of them he, at least he should have put it on target but um, or i think he had a half decent game he came in as a substitute for mason mount who unfortunately i think he got injured in the in the first half and he had to kind of um, play left wing back at one point of time i don't know what's the obsession with playing christian pulisic at left wing back but 
But when but once Malangsa came at left back, I think we switched to a back four and Pulisic was played much forward. And this was the penalty incident. This was as clear as day of penalty. As Piliqueta tries to get a shot away, and the defender Luan Gas, um, it was not Luan Gas, yeah, um, it was not a defender who who hit it hit his hand here. It was outstretched. It was a clear penalty. And Kai Havertz, the man for the man for the moment, scored the winner in the Champions League final and scored the winner here. Cool and composed penalty. And at the end, towards the end, where Pamela's were trying to attack. They lost the ball. We were on the counter attack. Ziyech puts in an inch-perfect pass for Kai Havertz. Um, he goes through. Uh, Luan Garcia puts in this tackle. Initially, it was not given. But on consultation with VAR, it was overturned and it was given a straight red because it was the end of a goal-scoring opportunity. I don't know what was the point at the, uh, what was the point at that moment in time because it was literally 120 past six moments, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, what's done was done. And Chelsea are now the FIFA Club World Cup champions. What we missed out in 2012 against Corinthians, where we were a bit lackluster, Gary Kale getting sent off and whatnot. We are torn for here. Yes, not the prettiest of performances, but we will take this any any day of the week. And we are now FIFA Club World Cup champions. We have completed the set. We just go on and on. Our trophy hunt continues. We are still in contention for three more trophies this season. Um, of course, we have the Carabao Cup final on the February 27th against Liverpool at Wembley. We are in. We are in. We're still in the FA Cup, and obviously, we're still in the Champions League, which will resume after in one or two weeks from now on. But that's the end of this review. Chelsea. Um, we can keep. We, I can keep on singing praises of them. That's how much I have supported this club for the last 12 years. My friend introduced me to it. Thank God, he introduced me to Chelsea Football Club 12 years ago, and have seen every single trophy won. I've seen. I've seen highs. I have seen lows when we were we were down in 16th and we somehow got to 10th. Um, we have never really been in a trophy doubt. Every single, at least one in two seasons, worst case, we somehow managed to win a trophy. And may long that continue as long as this guy Roman Abramovich is here. Roman Abramovich, say what you may want, but every football club at this point, um, apart from maybe Man City, would want an owner like him. You may say he splashes the cash. But as long as you're winning trophies, you 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 don't get to you don't give two flying fucks about oh you spend money oh you don't and stop crying about your owner saying how hashtag owner out um, um, when you want him to spend money and make it make sense. But anyway, if you know this video, consider liking this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification to get notifications whenever I upload videos like this or go live. I will do possibly two more videos tomorrow. One regarding Bosida Banovic's sacking at Chennai NFC. And the second one regarding IPL auction picks by the Chennai Super Kings. And I'll possibly try to cover the other teams as well. Um, until then, as I keep saying at the end of every single video, stay safe and wash them hands.